You're listening to Bible Prophecy Daily, a weekday podcast where Bible prophecy matters and matters greatly. Shalom in the Lord. My name is Dr. Michael Weiss with Zion's Hope. I'm defining end times terms biblically and talking about why it matters as well. These are common terms or phrases within the Bible or the study of eschatology or end times that most of us are familiar with. So far, I've discussed various topics and I want to cover a critical event in the history of the Jews, which also pictures a prophetic event that is still yet to occur. But first, I want to talk about the perspective the Jews had when scripture was being written. For us in the West, we have more of a a linear view, or a view within the time going from one point to another in a line. That's one reason why we struggle understanding biblical prophecy, because the Israelites didn't think that way. They viewed things very differently. They viewed prophetic events as cyclical. There may be one main event, but that led to a pattern of events just like the main one or something similar to that. Now, another way to say this is that a prophetic event can happen at more than one time in history. For those of us who study prophecy for any amount of time, we have heard some people talk about prophecy as a near and far prophecy. That is, there was a near fulfillment from when a biblical text was written, and that proved God was speaking and that the event validated his prophet as being sent from him and more. But then they would also say it pictures a far or future event from when the prophet wrote or said it. And while there are some elements of truth to that, there's a problem. And that problem is that in our minds, there can only be two fulfillments. But in the Jewish mind, that's not the case. There can be more than two fulfillments of a prophetic event in the biblical Jewish mindset. And that is the case with our next phrase, which is the abomination of desolation. You find this phrase in Daniel 9:27, 11:31 and 12:11, Matthew 24:15 through 21 and 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 4. I'm going to read some of these verses, not all of them, but just to give you a taste of what this is and then of course to define it biblically. Daniel 11:31 Forces from him will arise, desecrate the sanctuary fortress and do away with the regular sacrifice, and they will set up the abomination of desolation. Daniel 12:11 From the time that the regular sacrifice is abolished and the abomination of desolation is set up there will be 1290 days Matthew 24:15 and 16 Therefore when you see the abomination of desolation which was spoken of through Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place let the reader understand then those who are in Judea must flee to the mountains then last 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 3 and 4 No one is to deceive you in any way, for it, that is the day of the Lord, will not come unless the apostasy comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction who opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, displaying himself as being God. So the abomination of desolation is the placement of an image of a man into the temple that's built for God. Specifically, this image is placed in the most holy place or the holy of holies within the temple of God. Second, and this is kind of another history lesson. The book of Daniel also speaks of a man who did this from our time historically. It was fulfilled in 168 BC when a Syrian ruler named Antiochus Epiphanes ordered his soldiers to kill a pig or pigs on the altar of Zerubbabel's temple in Jerusalem and then scatter the blood throughout the temple, therefore desecrating the temple. Then he put a statue of Zeus in the temple with his face on it and demanded the Jews bow down and worship him. He was a really humble guy, by the way. Antiochus thought of himself as a god 
thus the body of Zeus, and the demand for worship. He also stopped the regular sacrifice, outlawed the Torah, forbade circumcision, and sadly, many of the Jews followed his demands. However, to other Jewish people, the sacrifice of a ceremonially unclean animal or animals to a heathen deity was a great abomination. And then the setting up of that image, of course, with Antiochus' face on it, was part of that abomination. It occurred historically with Antiochus, and Jesus said it will occur again. You say, well, when will it occur? It will occur once more during the 70th week of Daniel, when the Antichrist has an image of himself set up in the temple in Jerusalem and demands worship. This is what the Apostle Paul was talking about in 2 Thessalonians 2, which I just read. You say, well, wait a minute. They can't do that now. Exactly. There's some specific things that are needed for this to take place. First of all, the Jews will need open access to the Temple Mount. Today, at the time of this recording, they do not control the Temple Mount. And most of the time are not even allowed to go up there. But even if they don't control the Temple Mount, they can still be granted access to it somehow. So the abomination of desolation cannot be placed there right now because the Jews don't have access. They can't get up there to offer any kind of sacrifices. Second, there needs to be some kind of Jewish structure placed on the Temple Mount. This doesn't have to be some kind of fancy temple like Solomon or Herod's Temple, or even a simpler structure like Zerubbabel's Temple. It could be a tent like the tabernacle, or maybe a prefabricated structure that could be put up in a day or two. But a structure needs to be there. Third, the Jews need the implements and people to offer sacrifices. The Temple Institute in Jerusalem has pretty much everything prepared except for the Ark of the Covenant. But that leads me to, to the people or the priests that are needed to offer the sacrifices. Now, many of the, the Jewish people and the, the Institute and others have done some genetic research and more to see who may be qualified as priests to offer the sacrifices. And that brings me to number four. They need the animals to sacrifice. Now, if you've been in Israel and know anything about it, you know there's plenty of lambs in Israel. <laughs> but at this point, they're still looking for the perfect red heifer or cow to sacrifice. And they don't necessarily need the Ark of the Covenant as long as they have access to the stone upon which it used to stand. Much like in Herod's temple during the days of Jesus, they didn't have the Ark. So they sprinkled the blood on the stone where the Ark used to stand, basically. And today you find that next to the Dome of the Rock. So in the future, during Daniel's 70th week, that seven-year period, a man will arise whom we call the Antichrist. He will stop the sacrifices and set up an image of himself within some kind of temple structure on the Temple Mount and demand to be worshipped as a god or as God himself. Now a question arises, what about 70 AD? Believe it or not, most of Christendom, and I use that word loosely, and those who hold to a preterist or amillennial view state that the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple in 70 AD was the permanent and main fulfillment of of Jesus' words in Matthew 24 and Luke 21. They said it was God's judgment on the Jewish people, which it was for sure, and that the standard of Rome was placed there or on or near the temple, which was the abomination of desolation. But there's some problems with that. A lot of verses have to be spiritualized because Scripture is clear that talks about God's wrath upon all humanity, not just Israel. Nero never went to Jerusalem. Titus tried to stop his army from destroying the temple. And for those of us who are futurists, of which I include myself, we also need to be careful about overlooking the significance of 70 AD. There were signs in the heavens. Josephus writes about that, many of which parallel Matthew 24. The sacrifices were stopped in 70 AD. You know, we cannot ignore those events. Though some of what Jesus, Josephus wrote, of course, was at least secondhand knowledge. But again, we cannot go to the other extreme and say it was the complete fulfillment of the abomination of desolation in, and the events of Matthew 24. Well, why is that, you say? Because remember, in Jewish theology, a prophetic event can occur more than once. Yes, there was a historical event with Antiochus in 168 BC. And while there were echoes of that event in 70 AD, it's not the final fulfillment of the abomination of desolation. 
there is still a future abomination of desolation that the Antichrist will set up, demand worship, and claim to be God. You say, well, what is the image? What will the image be? We're not told. But I do believe that technology is going to be greatly involved in whatever it is that takes place. And I want to issue a word of caution here. For many years, Christianity and many Christians within Christendom have tried to pin the tail on the Antichrist. Some have said it's this person or it could be that person or whoever, whatever, down through history. And while some of those evil individuals may have prefigured what the Antichrist will do, how he will act or the way he will think, we've always been wrong. So be careful of that. Be careful of hype. But I do want to make an application. Antiochus demanded to be worshipped, and the Antichrist will demand the same thing. Whom do we worship? That's a question I have. Whom or what do we worship? You say, well, how do I know what I worship? Two very simple tests. On what do you spend the most money? That could be an indication. Now, if you've got kids, yes, a lot of money goes to your kids. I understand that. But where do you spend most of your money? And on what do you spend the most time? Yes, we have to work, and most of us spend a lot of time there. Yes, we want to spend a lot of our time with our families. But there's still other time that we have that we invest or waste on other things. So, two tests you can choose and see whom you worship. Now, connected to this is also the idols in our lives or the potential idols in our lives. The abomination of desolation was and will be an idol of some kind. Do we have idols in our hearts? Family, spouse, child, work, money, power, prestige, education, ministry, or something else? And I can promise you this. If we don't smash the idols in our minds and hearts as believers, God will smash them for us, and it's much more painful. So those are some things to consider as we finish up defining the abomination of desolation. I'm Dr. Michael Weiss with Zion's Hope. Be sure to visit our website, zionshope.org. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, Parler, and YouTube. We have hundreds of videos on end times and more from our gifted Bible teachers. On our website, you'll also find books, articles, and many other resources that are available for you as well. So until the next time, be strong in the Lord until He returns. Thanks for listening to Bible Prophecy Daily. We hope you learned something valuable today. Be sure to subscribe wherever you heard this podcast so you never miss an episode. 